Welcome to the first video of this series in which I will try to turn you into a happy, self-confident artist. I made this slide a while ago for another video and book, but it's also useful here to show you that we are capable of doing things better than we think. We just need to give ourselves a chance. So, what kind of artist are you? If you are watching this video because you are simply curious, you are probably a 3 or 2.5. But did you find it difficult to even start coloring a page? I bet you are between a 1 and 2. I am a 1.5, so I am an extremely insecure perfectionist. Yay! Very useful when you make a living from making art, right? According to scientists, each time we face a task, in this case to color a page, a bottle starts between our limbic system, which controls emotions, memories and instinct, and our prefrontal cortex, which takes information through our senses and processes it to make decisions. We could say that our limbic system is primitive. If the task we have to do is easy and pleasant, it will be willing to do it, but if he finds it difficult or challenging, it will try to get away. On the other hand, the prefrontal cortex is what forces us to complete a task, but this part doesn't work automatically. We need to put effort into making it work. So, we need to focus on our goal, and in this case, our goal is to lose the fear of ruining a page and have coloring so our limbic system is happy and stops trying to run away. Okay, let's do this. I just want you to go, grab a coloring book and search for a page you are afraid of ruining. If you are afraid of ruining any page, just open the book from anywhere and you got it. That's the page you are going to color today. I'm serious. Go. I won't say anything else until you go and grab a book. Oh, and we are going to need some pencils or markers or whatever medium you are comfortable with. Grab that too. One more thing while you get all you need. Every person is unique, so your art is unique too. You are the only one who decides what looks good and what doesn't. Let's see an example. What do you think? Is this a ruined canvas or a masterpiece? This is Jackson Pollock's painting number five. To me, I'm so sorry, Mr. Pollock, but to me, this is a ruined canvas. But it doesn't matter what I think about it. What matters is that it looked good to him. Many more people like it because it sold for a whopping $140 million, making it one of the most expensive works of art in the world. So, when you think you ruined the page, wait to see what you think the next day. You may find that you created a new style. Who knows? Well, enough talking and let's start coloring. I don't know what kind of page you find intimidating, so I'll start coloring some in different ways and with different mediums. We can finish them on future videos if you want to. Also, this exercise of jumping from one page to the next will help those of you who need to finish a page completely before moving on to the next one. Hi, Jessica! So, let's pick a page at random. This one. The trick to starting to color a page is to find the part of the illustration that first catches our attention and the part that seems least interesting to us. Here, the cat is the most interesting part for me and the rest is what will help the interesting part stand out. The question is, which part do you want to start with today? If you can't decide, start with the same as me or just flip a coin. We color to relax and have fun, so if something makes you nervous, let chance decide for you. Now we need to pick a medium and a color. 
If you don't know what color or medium to choose, you can choose the same as me, your favorite medium or color, or just close your eyes and choose one. All colors are beautiful. As long as you don't choose a very light color to cover a very dark area, we are good to go. In this case, I will use my Caron d'Orge Neo Color 2 Aquarel crayons. And I will start working on the part that will make this cute little kitty stand out. Why did I choose to start this way? Easy! I just don't know yet how I want to color the cat. So, to start by coloring the rest gives me the time to think of it. These are water-soluble wax pastels that can be used dry or wet. Well, we can do a more in-depth video about different techniques if you are interested. Although, you may already know all the ins and outs. Anyway, if you would like us to talk more about this medium, just leave a comment, okay? For now, let's just say that we better apply light pressure or we will make the grayscale underneath quickly disappear. This medium can get very opaque, which is great when we want to cover a dark area or hide a mistake, but we must be careful if we want the grayscale to do its job. I used uh, dark colors around the cat because dark colors will make my cat stand out. Well, they will make him stand out because I will not color him dark. In fact, I think he will end up probably being completely white. Anyway, if your cat is going to be dark, just do the opposite. Use light colors around him. Unless you want him to be hidden among the cushions of petals. If all the colors were dark, it would be difficult to see the cat at a glance, because nothing would stand out. On the bright side, whoever looked at it for a while will be surprised when they realized that there is a cute cat sleeping there. So, no, if you think that by choosing the so-called wrong colors you ruined the page, you did not. Everything was intentional. I'm using colors that are near to each other in the color wheel. Why? Because when we use analogous colors, which is um, what this color scheme is called, we get variety but nothing stands out. This feels pleasing and calming, right? But what if I add this orangey yellow? This color is on the opposite side of the color wheel, so it is a complementary color. Welcome contrast! Bye bye, pleasant and calming feel! Do you notice how your eyes are jumping from the cat to this cushion continuously now? That's because this cushion is competing against the cat for your attention. What do you think? Did I ruin the page? Nah. Layering colors can do magic, you'll see. Okay, we are back on track. Nothing stands out more than the white cut. We can call this done, but since I am trying to mess up and fix up this as many times as possible, hoping to change the fear of doing things wrong for the excitement of trying new things, we are going to add alcohol now. Not for drinking, but for wetting the pigments. We will use alcohol instead of water because it dries faster and doesn't soak the page. In any case, don't forget to place a sheet of paper underneath for extra safety.
and what I told you before is happening. I added too much pigment here, so the grayscale is disappearing. No problem, we can use a paper towel to lift some paint. We can add more alcohol and keep pressing with our paper towel until it looks good to us. The grey scale is back! Yay! Now let's continue. As you can see, the colors look much more intense when we activate them. So I will probably add more blue to all the cushions to reduce the contrast between them. The thing is, I would like us to try messing up more pages together. So let's finish this, add some more details to the cat and move on to the next page. The cat is going to be white. So let's use a uh, salmon to color his nose and ears. Yes, I know, my crayon is upside down. I don't want to sharpen it and the tip is too blunt for detail, so the bottom of it is perfect for this task. Some alcohol to get rid of the crayon texture. And now I am going to use uh, these pencils just to enhance the shadows. Just let the gray scale guide you. By making small strokes, we will also make our cat look fluffier. Okay, next. Linda asked uh, for coloring the water on this page. So let's put the safety paper in place and do this. When there is a wide range of gray in a grayscale image, and especially when there is a nice contrast between adjacent areas, we can cover those areas with just one color. And it will look as good as we would have used many. We just need a transparent medium to let the gray scale do its magic. And we also need it not to be very dark. So this frost blue Copic marker will be perfect. Paint over the darkest areas as well. You may think that it is not necessary, but the truth is that the illustration will look better if you do it because by doing so, we will be getting a bluish black instead of pure black. Also, leave white or lighter areas unpainted to create more contrast and simulate the crest of waves.
At this point, we could consider the water done and continue coloring the rest. But let's focus on messing up the water. <laughs> when using transparent mediums, the areas that were black and dark gray before will always look more desaturated than the areas that were white and light gray. Some people like this and some people don't. If you like it, leave it as is. If you don't, you'll need to go and grab a more opaque medium. A colored pencil, for example. As you see, we can make the dark areas look more blue and less black this way. If you try to do this with a darker blue marker, it won't work. It will just look even darker. If what you want is to get rid of the black areas, you can do it with the crayons we used in the previous page. Yes, we can cover black with a light color like this one. The more pigment we left on the page, the less black will see through. We can blend this with the color pencil we used before instead of alcohol. Let's color the first wave this way. By the way, we can also use a similar color for blending. As you see, the colors look now more saturated. Let's color some more. As long as the medium is opaque, we can use very, very light colors, like this one. And we are going to be able to cover black without any problem. Let's use now a white pencil for blending, just to compare it with the other two colors. When we use white, we need more pigment from the crayon if we want to cover the black areas completely. How about using yellow? What do you think? If this were a sunrise, we would have to use more colors than blue on the water, right? So off we go. A little bit here and there. We could also use orange. Well, you got the idea, so let's move on to the next image. Okay, an illustration with black background. If you never know how to color the background, these kinds of pages are perfect for you. Moreover, the black background will make your coloring stand out. Okay, what part of this illustration first catches your attention? To me is the snake and these three flowers at the bottom. So, now we have to decide where we start. If you don't know how you want to color the snake yet, you should probably start with the floral background. I think this time I will start coloring the head of the main character. I'll use Copic markers, so let's put the safety paper in place. Since I only own six different colors of markers, I will color it blue and then add yellow on top. That should turn my snake green.
My goal is to make the snake look cute. So I will use uh, colored pencils to add color to her cheeks. What color are snake's eyes? I don't know, but this one will have blue eyes. Now let's let the gray scale guide us with the shadows. If you are not used to painting shadows, you will probably just choose a darker version of the color. But the thing is, we can paint shadows any color we want. We are going to use blue, but instead of using a dark blue, we will use this light blue. When choosing your colors, keep always in mind the opacity of the medium and the brightness of the gray underneath. If in doubt, start with a light color. How cute would be a snake with eyelashes? Whoops, let me sharpen this pencil. There you go, a cute snake. Next page. This is a room of an abandoned house that has been reclaimed by nature. At first, we can feel overwhelmed by illustrations that have a lot of small details like this one. But in reality, there is not so much going on here. We have the main element of the illustration, a bunch of flowers, leaves and stems, and a window in the background. That's all. Let's imagine that you don't like coloring flowers or you don't like coloring small flowers or you just find it difficult to choose the right color when there are a lot of flowers. Since this is the Imagine coloring book, why don't we break all the rules and use the usual colors of a violin for the flowers and the colors of flowers for the violin? Let me color the background first, so I have time to think about whether I want to start with nature or the musical instrument. I am thinking of coloring all nature first, although it will take me a long while, so I think I will color a little bit of both. Let's make a mess! Sometimes we start using a color that is too dark. By the way, this is French Grey Grand Dash Museum Aquarelle. Well, as I was saying, sometimes we start using a color that is too dark, and everything we do to fix the mistake make it worse. When that happens, just leave the mistake alone and try something different somewhere else. Actually, we will not call that a mistake, but a testing area, okay? Try a lighter color. This is sepia 10%. Try a different hue. This is burnt ochre. And we are ready. Go back to the testing area and run some more tests.
Let's imagine that the light comes from the upper left corner and let's go over the lines that would be in shadow with this pencil. It looks good to me. So why not try it here? Well, the testing area looks better than before. Let me continue color in fast mode. And now let's keep experimenting and use the raw sienna to go over the lines and areas that would be facing the sun. I will also color the window frame. The glass has no shadows, but it will now. For adding shadows and a little bit of texture or color variation, we will use the genuine cobalt blue. If you watched my previous video, you'll know that I have a little problem with the name brands give to their colors. Why did they add genuine? Is there another cobalt blue? And if so, is the other one called fake cobalt blue? Anyway, let me finish this and move on to the violin. Okay, we would color the rest of the flowers in the same way. Now, how would you color the violin if it were a flower? I think I will color the pegs green. I'll use um, spring green. Yeah, I'm biting my tongue. I'm also using light olive uh, 40%, Prussian blue for the areas in shadow, and lemon yellow for the opposite areas. The same yellow as a base color for the pegs box and scroll. No, I'm not an expert in musical instrument, I just googled parts of the violin. Okay, um, let's try with orange to cover the areas in shadow. Did they name this one just orange? What's wrong with it? Doesn't it deserve a middle name or something? Uh, sorry, I forgot I was biting my tongue. Well, this orange is not dark enough, so let's try with the russet. Yeah, 
That looks better. Let's continue with the periwinkle blue. And uh, while we decide what color we want for the body, let's color the bottom part of the window. Same color as before. Let's try this crimson aubergine. Mm, no, there is not enough contrast. Let's try blending it with this pink crayon. Yes, it is called just pink. I think pink is perfect, but I would like it to look as smooth and shiny as a real violin, so let's try adding alcohol. Much better. Let's use the Crimson Overgene color pencil here. in here. And how about here too? Hmm, how about the yellow? Too bright? Not sure if I like how it's looking, so I'll add shadows while I think about it. What if I add gold ink? I'll use Windsor and Newton ink. But if you have a glitter pen, you will find this easier to do. Ah. 
I will probably mess this up, but I think I will add golden touches to the flowers as well. Okay, I went crazy and added gold everywhere. Well, I had so much fun, so it was totally worth it. Hope you had fun too. Don't forget to leave a comment letting us know if you find these kinds of video useful. And if you get stuck somewhere, we are here for you. See you around. Bye!